Welcome again. Today we discuss the feedback mechanisms that would be associated with an increase in mean global temperature. And we review topic 1.1.6 with a definition and an explanation of the principles of positive and negative feedback. Feedback, the return of the output from a system as input so as to affect succeeding outputs. Negative feedback tends to damp down or neutralize or counteract any deviation from an equilibrium and it promotes stability in a system. Positive feedback amplifies or increases change. It leads to an exponential deviation away from an equilibrium. The issue of global warming. Planet Earth warming as a result of greenhouse gas emissions, gases like carbon dioxide and methane and nitrous oxide filling the atmosphere and trapping additional amounts of heat. Temperature rises as a result of this extra heat in the atmosphere. Is there anything to counteract this deviation from the equilibrium temperature of 15 degrees Celsius? As the average temperature of the Earth increases, evaporation at the equator increases. With this increased evaporation, there is an increase in snowfall at the poles. With this increased snowfall, there is a cooling effect. When the temperature drops, the evaporation switches off. When the evaporation switches off, the extra snowfall would stop and then the temperature would rise again. Only to repeat this feedback cycle where temperature increases just a little bit above the equilibrium level and then it's regulated and brought back down a little bit below the equilibrium level. So over time, this negative feedback maintains a steady state with small deviations above and below the equilibrium point. Let's summarize this with a feedback loop. Global warming brings increased evaporation. This in turn brings more snowfall in the polar regions. That creates a cooling effect. The cooling effect brings a decrease in temperature. And the decrease in temperature reduces warming. But if warming is reduced, then evaporation switches off. And when evaporation switches off, snowfall switches off. And so does the cooling effect. So then it would start the cycle again, leading to this oscillation above and below the average temperature. Another possible scenario related to the topic of global warming is the melting of the permafrost, that permanently frozen part of the soil in the tundra. If global temperatures rise, predictions are that the permafrost would begin to melt. With the melting of this permafrost comes increased decomposition, which releases methane gas into the atmosphere. Over time, more melting releases more methane. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. With more methane gas, there is even more global warming. More global warming means more melting of ice. And again, even more of the methane gas in the atmosphere. Is this positive feedback or negative feedback? Complete the feedback loop below for the melting of the permafrost.
Can you fill in the five boxes without any help? This will get you started. This is the second step. And this completes the feedback loop. The self-regulation of natural systems is achieved by the attainment of equilibrium through feedback. Negative feedback is a self-regulating method of control leading to the maintenance of a steady-state equilibrium. Positive feedback leads to increasing change in a system. It accelerates deviation. Good example of positive feedback is the exponential phase of population growth. But all feedback systems involve time lags. Distinguish between steady state and static equilibrium. Explain the significance of negative feedback in maintaining steady state equilibrium. Classify each of the following as positive or negative feedback.